Management Parking Advisory Board meeting to order. It's on uh, January 9th. Did I say January? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I'm six months behind or six months ahead. I'm not sure. June. See, you miss, uh, miss three or four meetings. That's what happens. My apologies. Um, the Traffic and Parking Advisory Board reviews items of interest regarding parking and traffic items. We are an advisory board and our favorable recommendations today will go before the Oshkosh Common Council. The council can accept or reject any recommendation from this board. If you don't agree with our decision, you can discuss that item with any council member. If the board does not recommend an item, a common council member may in fact sponsor a new ordinance regarding that same item. All items do require two readings before the common council. The first reading will take place on Tuesday, June 23rd, got it that time, at 6 p.m. and you will be allowed to comment on the item at that time, though the, uh, the council will take no action. On Tuesday, July 14th at 6 p.m., the item will be on a second reading, at which time the council will in fact take action. You will again be allowed to speak to the council at that time. For this afternoon's meeting, I will read each agenda item, at which time if you'd like to speak, please approach the podium, one at a time, please, and give your name and address. I do ask that you keep your comments pertinent to the agenda item itself. The item will then come back to this board for discussion and ultimate action. Please call roll for attendance purposes. Table? Here. Eliza? Here. Kaczynski? Here. Wanschneider? Here. Becker? Here. A little housekeeping details. I will turn over to you, Mr. Collins, for some introductions. Oh, sure. So we have a new board member, so Sarah Eliason. Hello. Hello. All right. So she replaced um, Steve Haas, who resigned after five years. Um, thought it was time for someone else to get a turn. <laughs> and then um, Jake Krause is our new council, our returning council representative. He was a couple years ago. On again, ago. off again. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, and absolutely. And Peschel was last year. So um, I know he has a f different work schedule, so I assume he might be coming a little bit. Fair enough. Which then brings... If you've got somebody on the phone. Oh, I think that's... Matt, are you on the phone? Somebody is. Someone is. Um, <laughs> I think that's Lieutenant Harris. I was going to... Or Captain Harris, I should say. Which then brings us to Lieutenant. the first Lieutenant, actual item on the agenda, which is approval of minutes. So moved. Second. Comments, questions? Seeing none, I will call the roll for approval of minutes. Staple? Aye. Bison? Aye. Kaczynski? Aye. Juan Schneider? Aye. Becker? Aye. Which brings us to public comment. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, there will be no general public comment at this meeting of the Traffic and Parking Advisory Board. In-person public comment is permitted on agenda items only. So you folks will in fact get a, a chance to speak this afternoon if it's a uh, excuse me an agenda related item when in person comment is permitted citizens are encouraged to consider submitting written comments on agenda items for items other than agenda items comments must be submitted in writing written public comments may be sent via email addressed to the transportation department placed in city hall dropbox or sent via email to, uh, which will then be distributed to the board and made part of the public record of the meeting and we have received a number of those for this afternoon's meeting. Both written and in-person commentary must be must include the citizen's name and address and must be related only to two agenda items and traffic issues within the authority of this board. Statements should be addressed to the board members and not to any city staff or other person. Verbal statements are limited to three minutes and citizens may only provide comment once unless special permission is granted by the board. Which is a nice segue into new business first item being election of chair and vice chair yeah so this basically each year we have to um, elect a new chair and vice chair and as mr haas was our vice chair and he's no longer on the board um, so we got to go through that process for those positions that being the case i will entertain nominations for chair are you willing to serve again? I am, in fact, willing to serve. I would nominate Daniel Becker, then. I'll second it. Questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, I will ask that the roll be called on election of chair. Staple? Aye. Eliason? Aye. Shedinsky? Aye. Blanchnader? Aye. Becker? Abstain? I counted right, that's four. 
<laughs> okay, just checking. Otherwise, it'd be a problem. Which brings us to nominations for vice chair. I would uh, ask the same question of you, Mr. Staple, that you asked of me. Um, I appreciate being asked. I am gone quite a bit. I mean, this year it won't be a problem, but other years. You're only. Uh, it's only for this year. Only committed to uh, this time next year, give or take. Okay. I then uh, nominate Jim Staple Second. for vice chair. Comments, questions, concerns on that nomination? Seeing none, I would ask that the roll be called on the election of vice chair. <clears throat> Lysum? Aye. Jasinski? Aye. Von Schneider? Aye. Becker? Aye. Staple? Uh, abstain. Which brings us to agenda two review proposed street reconstruction of West 9th Ave from South Oakwood Road to Linden Oaks Drive. Okay, so this is our, our obviously our main topic for tonight. Um, so we got Dustin Gierak, who is our city engineer, um, with us, and then James Robbie, who's our director of public works. Um, I will let uh, Mr. Gierak kind of explain what uh, the proposal is. But what we're looking at is from from a traffic review board standpoint, is we're looking at the layout of the street and what makes the most sense. So we have. Um, kind of what the initial proposal is, and then we can kind of go from there. So I'll let Mr. Gierek explain what it is. Sure, so the uh, CAP for 2021 is planned for reconstruction of West 9th Avenue from South Oakwood Road to Linden Oaks Drive. Um, part of that reconstruction will include installation of sidewalks on the north and south side of the road, um, planned to be a 48 foot face-to-face -face concrete pavement. Um, the bike, pan, bike and ped plan called for bike lanes. Uh, the bike and pedestrian advisory committee already um, recommends approval of the bike lanes. So we got bike lanes uh, planned for 12 foot travel lanes in each direction and a two way left turn lane um, for the entire stretch. And I think, uh, I think I gave you just kind of the cross section in your packets that basically outlines that. So that is the um, initial um, layout of the street. Um, I think, I don't know how you want to do that, if you want to take in-person comments or um, I can go through some of the email comments um, or if you have more questions on the, the project first, how you want to do that. The way I would prefer this and I, I would hope it would be more helpful to our guests, meaning city staff, is to hear from the public. At this point that way those questions can be addressed after the fact if any are raised so I would invite anyone that uh, of the any member of the public that has a comment on this particular issue to address the podium again please state your name and address going once there we go <laughs> My name is uh, Harvey Bouchel, 2877 West 9th. We don't understand why we need a turn lane. Is there any reason why that's... And how much land are you going to be taking on both sides of the... Are they going to be in our front door? Go ahead, Mr. Robbie. If, um, there is uh, currently a, a project underway. We are working with some consultants uh, to determine uh, how much uh, right away is necessary from each property. Uh, as soon as they uh, get a little bit further in that project, uh, all impacted properties will be receiving another correspondence uh, from us, introducing them to the consultant that will be handling the project for us uh, with whom they will be uh, communicating. So there's a current project underway for that aspect of this project so it's already been stated that it's going to be 48 feet face to face curb to curb well the the right-of-way acquisition uh, is going to an 80-foot right-of-way to be able to uh, fit a future arterial with street uh, the street is currently classified as a collector 
just east of here it is an arterial um, the comp plan calls for arterial streets to have an 80 foot right of way so planning for the future for the life of this street uh, this street would become a an arterial uh, prior to exceeding its useful life so rather than reconstructing it now and then prematurely reconstructing the street again in the future uh, we are planning and setting ourselves up for that future condition at this time and I applaud that but that was more information than I was looking for I I'm guess sorry. <laughs> that's okay no no issue more more is always better in that regard so was there a the, reason in there why they're putting a the turn lane I don't understand well and I, I'll, I'll get to that question believe me I'm, I'm kind of short-circuiting your uh, your public comment but I've got some of those very same questions um, from my perspective What's the current width as we sit here? Current width of that street? Justin? 20 feet. 20 feet. And it's arguably, I think the, the neighborhood would agree, it's pretty narrow. Um, yeah. And it's in rough I can shape. See getting rid of the curb, and, I mean, getting rid of the ditches and putting sidewalks. We just don't understand. It's a residential. Why do we need a turn lane? If we move it from 20 feet to 48 feet, granted, I, uh, I was in a small class in high school. I'm kidding. But 48 that we, we've got to acquire 28 more feet of blacktop somehow, some way. So is it safe to say we're going to uh, encroach 14 feet in either direction, just as a, a general rule of thumb? Uh, it, in some cases, uh, adequate right away for the 80 feet hours already in place. Uh, but if you're just looking at the, sh the street width, yeah, it would be approximately 14 feet in each direction. In, in People are, uh, are more, uh, more accustomed to where the blacktop ends as opposed to right of way. Uh, I mean, everybody's got right of way to one degree or another in front of their house. Some of it's this wide, literally, if you go down 20th Ave or 9th Ave as you go further east, some of it's rather, uh, rather wide. I think that's part of, the, uh, part of the issue here. And then to the resident's question, left turn lane. If you're westbound on 9th, there, by my count, is only one opportunity, potentially two, until you get to Linden Oaks. Because Pheasant Creek actually connects through Rushfield, depending on which way you're going. So did anyone look at uh, left turn uh, only, eastbound only? The, the, the main reason for the, the, the twiddle would be to um, help assist in residents turning the driveways as well as turning into the, the side streets as well. So it's not just looking at the intersections, it's also residents turning into the driveways. Which arguably happens potentially less often than turning from street to street. Absolutely. Um, any idea what the traffic count is westbound from Oakwood on 9th? Not that it, busy. No, it's not that high. I can't remember. I, th I did look it up. Um, uh, I, thought, I thought you said somewhere in the 2,800, yeah, 3,000 range. Yeah, it was a bit, yeah, that's right. It was around two, a little over 2,000, if I remember right. Per day? Yep. That would be that. Yeah, that'd be the average daily traffic. Um, so, right. I don't, I don't think we're we, – we have some leeway if we – we want to consider other options than a two-way left turn lane, but I think what uh, the thought was is that we wanted to keep the pavement 48 feet, correct? Correct, yeah, the, the 48 feet in width is, is to plan for the future of this becoming you know, a, a, an arterial for the city. And what, what do you consider the life of a street if you're planning? How far in the future are we planning? I, I would anticipate the useful life of this street will be 50 years or more. Well, unfortunately, none of us are probably going to be here to test that theory, but that was a joke, Speak folks. For <laughs> that was a joke, folks. Does that address your question for the uh, the left turn issue? Yeah, we're just hoping you don't do it. Now, what about the telephone poles and stuff like that? Are we going to have underground right wiring, or are they moving the poles? As far as public utilities goes, we have not heard exactly what they're doing. That would be up to the each individual a public entity to decide if they want underground or move poles. I would expect there would be some relocation of poles due to the, the reconstruction of the street. But again, if it's undergrounding, that would be up to the private entities. 
So it sounds like he's saying you need to call WPS. And I think, you know, WPS and all of the other private utilities, um, you know, while they're aware of the project, they haven't seen preliminary plans yet. Um, you know, I, I think as we get a little bit closer, we'll be able to share with them in the relatively near future a preliminary layout so they can start working towards that. But as of yet, they haven't seen a preliminary layout. And by my understanding, that doesn't add or subtract from the cost of the project because that's a cost they bear? Correct. So, I mean, my personal opinion has always been um, underground is far better. It's less uh, of an eyesore, uh, and it's uh, a whole lot easier to mow. Uh, undergrounding, they they may look to charge the municipality for if there's, if there's not a safety reason to, to do it. Um, I know in a lot of other projects, uh, you know, that that has been talked about. Um, that's been a significant cost that they certainly will look to pass on. If they make the decision to do it on their own, then not. But, um, you know, if there was a request to do it, they would certainly charge for it. Uh, just provided me uh, new information, Mr. Robbie. I appreciate that. And so you're saying typically they're going to be poles again? Generally speaking with street reconstruction projects, yes. Do you have any other comments? Just two more. Sure, go ahead, lay them out. Now, if you have to have a tree cut down, who has to pay for that tree removal? I believe it's in the right of way. It's the city's it, property, it, is it not, Mr. Yeah, if there, are, if there are any that are required to be removed as a part of the project, it would be a part of the project cost. And when is this project going to be done? Uh, the plan is for uh, in the CAP for 2021, so next summer. Well, you don't have, like, because I used to work for the city, and I always heard, Five-year plan, five-year plan. So it's not it, in a five-year plan? It's been in the five-year plan for four years now. Okay. That's all I have. A, a quick follow-up on his question about taking the tree down, though. So if that's going to if taking the trees down is going to add to the cost of the project, does that mean everybody's assessment will go up by that, or do you decide on the assessment first? No, the assessment rates are uh, established based on um, costs specifically related to the construction of the street or our sidewalk or things like that so um, those type of costs are not factored into the calculation for the rate okay well just don't make them so close so I can stick my hand out the door and slap the guy when he's driving by <laughs> fair enough thank you. thank you thank you for your comments anyone else <clears throat> yeah name and address for the record please Ginger Garman, I live at 2900 West 9th Avenue. Um, I also oppose the middle turn lane. Um, I did write a letter stating that we don't have trouble getting into our driveway. And I see a major problem with the turn lane because when the people are at the corner of Oakwood and 9th Avenue at that intersection, they step on the gas and they're out of town. And I think a middle turn lane will just allow people to continue to speed on by on their way out of town. And it's quite dangerous. That road is very narrow now. I think most of the residents agree that this needed to happen a long time ago. We love the idea of the sidewalk. We're a little concerned about the generosity in regards to the amount of grass that you have, 10 and a half feet on both sides for a tariff. Paris um, and we don't we're, we're not real crazy about the middle turn lane if, if anything I'd like to see a parking lane we have absolutely no parking on that street at all it always seems to be a problem if anybody has any kind of special event like I had a special event and we parked all our cars down at Mercy parking lot and shuttled everybody up to the house two and a half blocks so um, that might, might be something that would give you three lanes across and you could, you're still using three lanes for a parking lane possibly on one side of the street. And several years ago they had proposed that the sidewalk would be on one side of the street which would be on the north side of the street because there's such small property <clears throat> between the road and the doors of the of the people across the street from us we, we live on the west side and or on the north side and we seem to have more property 
front property than they do. So um, the sidewalk is greatly needed, though, because we have a lot of young families that like to walk in that area. We have the subdivision with Foxfire that has a lot of young families, and it's quite dangerous. So, and it does tend to be a really busy street in during the time that people are coming and going to ch to um, work. So, and so I'm wondering too, in regards to the assessment to the property owner, what is the cost for a property owner? Because we own about 80 feet across. So, what kind of cost are we looking at? Can you answer that? On my understanding is, unfortunately, that's to be determined based on okay. bidding. At, at this point in time, rates are usually established in January, uh, so the 2021 rates have not been established yet. Estimating based off of the 2020 rates um, that are currently in place would be approximately for the street sidewalk. Uh, would be approximately a hundred and fifty dollars per front foot or per foot of frontage. Oh, do the math, folks. Any other comments? No, nope, that was my main okay. concern. Thank you. That middle lane. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Raymond Yearwood, 2860 West 9th. <clears throat> you keep hearing about this 80 foot right away, and you're redoing Schnell with a 46 foot right away with the same sidewalk, turning lanes, bike lanes. Is the 80 foot to uh, <clears throat> take care of all the semi heavy truck traffic that's on 9th Street, or what? Why do we have to have an 80 foot when a 46 works someplace else? Uh, Snow Road is not a 46 foot right away. The street surface is 46 feet wide, whereas oh. what is proposed here is 48. Uh, Snow Road is classified as a collector. Uh, this in the future would be classified as an arterial. Um, and the comprehensive plan calls for an 80 foot right away on arterial streets. But is that also to uh, take care of all the heavy truck traffic that's going to be on there? There's a lot of it on there now. The uh, design of the pavement cross section would be to deal with the weight of truck traffic. Uh, the width of it is to have, you know, in the future, eventually four lanes of traffic would require the 48 feet, which would also then require the 80 foot of right of way. But then why don't you have it right away instead of putting in a, a turning lane then? I have four lanes instead of two lanes with a turning lane. Or put parking on each side without the turning lane. That's something we can consider. Right. Um, Very good question, sir. And one I intended to ask myself. So just so I understand, James, um, the difference in the streets is two feet in width. From, fa from curb, to fa curb face to curb face, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think just for clarification, what is the right of way on Snell? It's probably at least 60, uh, 66. 66 or more. I don't remember exactly. I, I know it varies 66. quite a bit. It varies in there, but in, in general, it's a 66. Yeah. Just for clarification, you know, I know the average person probably doesn't understand the difference, but we're talking about, you know, curb to curb is the pavement. So here it's proposed at 48. Snell is 46. But then when you're talking about right of way, that includes often the it's back a walk or back a walk sidewalk usually. so yeah it's so a back of sidewalk or back of sidewalk um if there is a sidewalk right so there's a difference between the pavement and the right of way um but as far as you know i've in and we got some email comments as well but as far as the what we do with that 48 feet that is up for discussion um whether we leave uh, the two-way left turn lane, um, whether we add parking on one side, add parking on both sides, that's something that we can work on. Um, I think that's still up for discussion that's, at this board. That's why we're having discussion at this board meeting right now before we move any further along in the process. A lot of the other, you know, a lot of the other questions as far as, um, so just for clarification to the traffic review board, we deal with um, traffic and what happens on the street as far as you know, the right of way acquisition stuff like that—that's not something that this board um, has. It, it, 
jurisdiction. Or jurisdiction over. That's a good way to put it. That's more of a, a council and um, board of review type of thing. Um, or I guess it'd be yeah, council primarily. Yeah, primarily a council. So anyway, mainly what this board's dealing with is what that cross section would look like as far as the pavement goes. Um, but since they're here, I mean, obviously they're willing to answer any of the other questions that they can at this time. What's the width of a standard parking lane? Eight feet. So you could, and I don't know if, did you bring the potential? We got, so we, we did come up with a couple other concepts that uh, you could consider. One of them would be, you could add parking on both sides, which would be eight feet on each side, a five foot bike lane, and then 11 foot travel lane on each side of the road that would come up with 48. Um, the advantages to that, it would potentially slow traffic a little bit and it would allow parking on both sides. Um, it would be 11 foot lane in each travel lane in each direction, which is, that's pretty standard. Most of our travel lanes are 11 or 12 feet. Cross. In a residential area, 11 foot would be fine. Um, or we could look at putting parking on only on one side um, as well. I'm going to at the switch. <clears throat> That's what I was and this reading. is this is the option of parking <laughs> at one side. Right? There's a second one going okay. around. So there's two different other options: one with parking on one side, and one with parking on both sides. So I guess you take them both. I got one. based on the feedback we got, we we were prepared with this as well. Any other comments, sir? Yes. Um, when more of these meetings come up, could we get more information? The first post or the first letter that we got said the enclosed agenda, which there wasn't any. The only thing that was in there was a cross section of the street. There was no time, there was no date, there was no room, there was nothing. It just says that there's going to be a meeting, but you, you can't speak or whatever on account of the virus and that. Could we get better information on these meetings? Is it your intent to bring this to council? Um, um, how this tonight? works is for this traffic review board, what um, like I, like I mentioned, what the traffic review board is concerned with is the um, actual usage of the pavement. Um, so there's a lot, even in the emails, there's a lot of stuff about assessments and um, other issues that aren't really under the jurisdiction of this board. So that's why with the meeting notice, generally we send them out 10 days in advance and what you get is you know our, our traffic advisory board agenda and then we put the <laughs> layout in there. However, the process is, is this board um, will make a recommendation on the lane layout, um, and then after that, it will go to council, and then there will be um, an opportunity to, to speak at council as well on any recommendations that this, this board makes. And I don't know from a public work standpoint if there are other opportunities or, or how that works for as far as the street layout. There obviously then previously there this has been in the CI the capital improvement plan for like James mentioned four years so every year there's an opportunity to speak on on that plan as well. Um, I don't know if you have there, anything else to add. Yeah, there's a neighborhood meeting that's uh, scheduled uh, that we send notices out for. Um, I think that's. It's going to be earlier this year because the, the schedule for the CIP uh, approval is moved up. Um, I don't remember exactly when it was, but uh, July or August, I think, is when the neighborhood meeting is scheduled for. Uh, we're still working on getting a room uh, established for that, so um, until we have a location established, we can't send out the notice for it. So uh, we do have uh, those meetings that we send out notices for as well. And then as we get closer to the project, uh, starting in the fall and through the start of construction, there are half a dozen or so letters that come out from the Public Works Office to um, all property owners adjacent to projects. But my question was, for this meeting here, we got a postcard that said there was going to be a meeting. There was no date, there was no time, there was no place. I mean, it's fine that there's all this other information in there, but if you're going to have a meeting, we would like to know when it is and what time and whatever so that we can attend. I mean, we had to look. Was Some it, people had to spend this, Jim? Uh, time calling the no, there office was, and that. You can explain that. There was two mailers, actually. Yes, and the first and the second one says, it changed from room 202 to 404, Correct. which was the original room that was on the computer for this meeting. Right. 
And we didn't know it, it even was in 202 because there was nothing on that. On the first notice there was. No, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, I believe there was. Yeah, there sorry. was. There, there, there was a first notice that went out and then there was a follow up postcard because I believe the room was incorrect on the first notice. But then there was just a date on it for, on the second one, on a postcard. There was no time or nothing on there. So, I mean, we would like to know sure. times and places so that we can attend. Yeah, that's, there, there was a little bit of a clerical error between what room number it was. So there was a second mailing sent that was just trying to clarify the room number. It wasn't, so assuming you got the first mailing. However, yeah, I, I get your point. That can include that on in the second notice. Although generally you'd only get one notice. Well, the long and the short of it, sir, is you will have at least three opportunities from what I've heard. Two more council meetings or two council meetings for the dollars and cents that this will be discussed, as well as pre-construction sometime late summer, early fall. Yeah, we have a neighborhood meeting late summer. Okay. And I do, that. that's another good point. I mean, I don't deal with, the, or this board doesn't deal with the special assessment so much. However... You know, I, as some people may know, council's been talking about alternatives for that policy for a couple of years now, and that's still being discussed. So um, issues with special assessments and things like that are better, probably best addressed to council. Um, but for this board, we're looking at the lane layout and then whether we should have bike lanes or not. But there'll be plenty of opportunities for comment beyond this meeting. This is just um, the initial kick off to when Public Works looks at the project. Um, the start of, start of it is getting into the capital improvement plan, which like the gentleman mentions, usually uh, a five-year plan. Um, and then it's in there every year. And then when it gets closer to like being planned for next year is the time to look out, okay, so we're planning on redoing this part of this part of Ninth Avenue, then what is that gonna look like? They have to get that information and recommendations from, for instance, the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Board, which recommended the bike lanes and sidewalks. Then they have to get input from the Traffic Review Board, which will recommend a lane layout and also give input on bike and pedestrian um, lanes. And then they can get that information to council, so council will ultimately make a decision on what they would like to see. And then Public Works can put that into the plan set so that they can get a bid. So that's kind of the long and short of how that process works. Anyone else that wishes to address the board? Steve Martin, 2899 West 9th Ave. I'm opposed of the turn lane. That traffic that flies by there, if you're not gonna do anything to slow it down, I dare you to bring your kids over and have them play in my front yard. It'll scare the crap out of you. That turn lane is gonna be nothing but and access to speed. I don't care how you lay it out otherwise, but that's ridiculous. So you can bring your kids over even before you make it closer to my house. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I will, not that we haven't already to a certain extent done this, but turn it over to the board and city staff. Um, just before we get to the board discussion, um, so I passed out some of the email comments I received. I know um, one of the citizens here had also emailed. I think we've covered most of what's in these um, emails, um, but I'm trying to think there's, a lot of questions about the two-way left turn lane and why we would need that. Um, there's one about adding sidewalks on one side of the street. So we got, um, you did get all those emails. We got Michael and Sarah Gumto, um, and I believe that's one of the, is that Sarah that spoke? I believe. Ginger. Oh, okay, that was Ginger. Okay, so we got, those are some of their comments. Um, I don't think there's, from reading through these, um, I don't think that there's any, or much, um, it seems like most of the, there is agreement that something needs to be done with 9th Avenue in that area. It is in rough shape and it is narrow. So I don't think there's a lot of people that oppose that. Um, most of it's regarding the, the two-way left turn lane um, and whether that's needed or not, potentially adding parking um, and then sidewalks on one or both sides of the street. 
And then there are a lot of questions about assessments and public input. Like I think we've already addressed the public input questions um, and uh, the feedback and the opportunities to do that. Um, then Tom and Ginger Gehrman and Ginger had spoke earlier um, asking for parking lane and did not like the two-way left turn lane. Um, and then there was Jill Edwards. Um, and that was more concerning taxes and special assessments and how it would affect them. And I know Mr. Robbie had answered her, her email and tried to explain that more. Um, Scott and Michelle Kosmer, um, they did not like the idea of bike lanes and sidewalks. Um, they seemed to like the road um, as it was and also where I've looking for opportunities for input, which, we, which we've talked about, um, and some concern with uh, any eminent domain that might happen and assessments. <coughs> and then we got James Burkhart. Um, again, did not like those shared left turn lanes. Um, asking questions about the right of way, which we've addressed. Um, potentially doing sidewalks on one side of the street. Um, asking about why the um, Terrace is ten and a half feet, which that we haven't addressed that one yet. So I don't know if, if Mr. Robbie wants to address that. Well, I, I think one big issue with uh, with the terrace is making sure that there's adequate room in the terrace for snow storage during the winter months. Um, you know, anyone who lives on a street that has narrow or no terrace uh, knows that um, you know dealing with snow in the winter on the sidewalk uh, is very troublesome and. Um, especially with uh, 48 feet of pavement. Um, th this width of terrace uh, will provide adequate room to be able to s store snow and also uh, greatly reduce uh, the amount of um, snow that gets thrown back on the sidewalk from, from the plows after people may have already cleared their sidewalks. And then um, there's some questions about how trees on their properties are going to be impacted. And I think for questions like specific to anybody's property, you'd be best to call the Department of Public Works and they can try to answer those questions for you. Um, and then there's also they had a comment about police enforcement, which um, uh, Captain Harris is listening in. So I'm sure that he has heard those concerns. Um, however, the and, and this gentleman's correct, I mean, generally, um, and I heard the comment about the two-way left turn lane and potential speeds. And generally, that would potentially calm traffic more than it would increase speeds. Generally, the people drive at um, a speed they feel comfortable. So generally, when you have a narrower lane, for instance, if you have you know, an 11 or 12 foot lane going each direction, so you're limiting traffic to one travel lane in each direction, they're going to have to um, potentially slow down for that car. They can only travel at the, the speed of the car in front of them. Um, the left turn lane does get some vehicles out of that lane of traffic, but in general, um, if you have one lane of travel in each direction versus two or four, you're, you're generally gonna have a little bit slower speed. So um, if we do add parking to one or both sides of the street, that, that could potentially reduce the speed of traffic um, because it would feel a little bit um, more confined, I should say. So that's something to take into consideration as well. But I think that pretty much um, from the emails I've got, other than specific questions about um, specific assessments or specific properties, I think we've heard the majority of the concerns that we've received. Any member of the board have a question? for Mr. Collins or any other city staff? I, I guess if I'm looking at these three options you have here. Am I correct in assuming that um, uh, option number one is the one that comes closest to what 9th Street looks like uh, east of 41? No, east. What's the turn? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Other than there are no bike lanes. Between Westfield and Knapp, roughly, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's that's when we did the road reconfiguration, I don't know, like three years ago. So there's one lane of travel in each direction, a shared left turn lane. Um, the only difference is there aren't bike lanes. This is okay. bike lanes are proposed that are right. not there. And, and 
Do you have a, a sense for what the police have found about speed? Um, I do not. There, anybody? I don't know, know if. Oh, I live on that stretch, and um, I think the traffic moves good. I don't think it's like speeding. You know, like beforehand, it was really treacherous. Like I would usually go out of my way and take Osborne around, and uh, now I, you know, I love driving on that section. Yeah. Generally, it would, from a traffic stamp, it would slow traffic generally. Although that's a little bit different because Ninth was previously a two lane that was wide enough to be driven like a four lane, and this is this is only a twenty foot road right now. So it, one thing I found too, when you'll just have the two lanes, if somebody's making a left turn, then people are going to drive on the shoulder or the bike lane or whatever, and that that can often be hazardous. Where does county jurisdiction come as you head west on 9th? Uh, 9th Avenue is not a county highway, so there would be no county jurisdiction. It would uh, become town of Algoma. Well, okay, town of Algoma. Um, everything is in the city limits to Linden Oaks. Beyond Linden Oaks, you start to have a... Uh, um, kind of a hopscotch property in the city, property in the town, property in the city, property in the town, uh, until you get out to Clareville, and then beyond that, uh, everything is in the town. Again, I'm going to ask the same question I've asked before. Have we talked with the town of Algoma? Are they going to uh, pick up the, uh, the bike lane should we choose to move forward with it? I have not had that conversation with the town of Algoma. Um, given that uh, the uh, boundary agreement with the town of Algoma has uh, all of this stretch of ninth out to Clareville uh, coming into the city in 23, I think. Yeah, I think 2023, the uh, rest of the stretch out to Clareville would come into the city. Uh, beyond that, uh, the north side of 9th Avenue is in the protected area, and the south side would be coming into the city in 2043. The reason I asked the question, and again, shoot holes in the theory, if you, uh, if you will. That's the purpose in bringing it up. What would prevent us from configuring 9th Avenue west of Oakwood Road, much like we did 20th west of Oakwood Road, with two lanes in each direction and at a transition point, and I can't think of the name, I, it might be Clareville, it transfers back down to one lane as we become more rural at that point. Just past the Y. Senior living facilities on the north side yeah, of the road. I, I don't. I don't so, know. So, so are you suggesting making it four, tra two travel lanes? Two in each travel direction? lanes in each direction. Um, I'm not thoroughly convinced the bike lanes required there. Uh, my reputation might precede me, but not a big fan of bike lanes. I'm not even sure they're warranted. One of my questions was going to be: Has anybody looked at utilization of a bike lane in that area? We like did. Um, well, two things. Okay. First. You know, the bike and the council approved bike and pedestrian plan has this section on it, and the bike and pedestrian committee is recommending bike lanes in this area. Um, but to answer your question about obviously, um, we do have some bike counts for some of the roads that have bike lanes. Oakwood Road, um, we did last year, and we were going to count it again this year, which actually we're probably going to do in July now. Um, we were going to do a little bit earlier, but because of the pandemic, we weren't able to get that started. But working with um, generally our East Central Regional Planning Commission does those bike counts, and they're planning on doing one again in July with their assistance. So that would we would then have some bike counts on Oakwood. We do have some bike counts on other roads, um, but I don't know specifically what they are. When they do the counts, do they count the number of people in the bike lane versus the number of people in the regular street versus the number of people on the sidewalk? No, that's hard to do. Because I mean, most of the time, <laughs> so. I, most of the time, I see people on bikes on the sidewalk. That's yeah, that's what my experience has been. And, and that's a whole nother topic because mm -hmm. we got people that want bikes on the sidewalk, and then we got, 
you know, serious bikers that want to be in the street, and then you kind of have the bike lane, which is something in between the two. Um, so it, it, it's based on perspective, I guess. If I may chime in quick. Um, sure. A lot of times the people that are on the sidewalks aren't comfortable on the roads because there is no bike lanes. So if you added bike lanes, there wouldn't be as many people. Yeah, usually, usually what I'm seeing it is here in Alcoma. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. there is a bike lane. Yeah, okay. If they're small children, I mean, we suggest them to be on the sidewalks, no matter if there is bike lanes or not. So back to my original question, Mr. Robbie. Any uh, any thought? Any uh, any input on why we can't do it like twentieth and transition back down to one lane each direction, somewhere past Paul's place? I, w I would well, think. Well, the, the project scope is planned to stop at Linden Oaks because well, at Linden Oaks is where you start to get uh, the the town property still uh, okay. along Ninth. Um, honestly, I hadn't considered that option uh, and hadn't thought about that question yet. Well, it, it meets the arterial needs, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it would. Um, it, uh, it'll keep traffic flowing. It won't cause for a backup if someone's turning left because everybody can move around on the fully paved right lane at that point. Um, the, I, I think the, the, the one concern would be the speed, and it would become an enforcement issue then. And we always, and I realize <clears throat> Captain Harris is probably uh, listening at the moment, that's really the issue that OPD and the yep. Sheriff's Department potentially need to, uh, to solve. Um, I mean, we're, uh, we're charged with looking at uh, road usage and safety. And I think two lanes in each direction is by far the safer option as opposed to bike lanes just for the mere fact I think we're going to be hard pressed to see a bike heading west on 9th Avenue when the safer option, which is why people, as Mr. Krause said, use the sidewalk, are going to cut through, come down Rushfield and up Pheasant Creek if they live in that neighborhood and need to get there um, because it's a death wish potentially to drive a bike on 9th Ave. I'm surprised we, uh, we even put them on sections further east on 9th Ave. But so I hate to add a, a third option, or excuse me, a fourth option to the mix, but that would be uh, my thought. Anyone else? I guess a question I have just so I know where everybody else is. I mean, in my mind, it makes sense to have the 48-foot width. Is mm -hmm. everybody, does that make sense to everybody, or is everybody thinking that doesn't make sense? I believe 48 feet is, is reasonable, two, yeah. four, four twelves yeah. across. And then, then it's a question of figuring out how we divide it up. Yep, and that's why I said four, uh, four twelves across. Well, yeah, I mean that's certainly an option too. The four twelves obviously would not allow for bike lanes. And the, from the bike and pedestrian standpoint, it, you know, having bike lanes would connect to Oakwood, um, which then connects to that West Haven um, area as well. So that would be the argument for for the bike lanes. So yeah, you, you do have, you know, if, say, so if it's 48 feet, then it's what you do with that 48 feet. So yeah, you could do four 12, 12 foot lanes. You could do the two way left turn lane. You could do parking on one side or you could do parking on both sides. Um, those are all viable options. I think the one, the one constant is you have to have one lane to travel in each direction, either that be 11 or 12 feet. That, that has to happen, but what you do after that there's some options. Ross, Dan, Sarah? What is the final say just from the council of like the two meetings after this or? Yes, mm -hmm. yep. So yeah. um, generally it's a little bit different, but the bike lanes for sure are gonna have to go to council for two readings. Um, you know whether they approve or, or not and that I think will also dictate which layout we go with however it I think it council would find it helpful if the board would you know recommend do you want would the board prefer more travel lanes would the board prefer parking on one side parking on both sides mm -hmm. or a two-way left turn lane I think that's kind of the main decision at this point 
Yeah, we definitely look at the advisory boards and we usually mm -hmm. like to get one or two options and then we'll sometimes tweak it, but we, we usually follow the advisory boards because they're mm -hmm. the ones that put the most time into it. What, uh, what width do you need for the left turn lane if you wanted to see if you could do parking, a left turn, one parking, on parking on one side, a left turn and two travel lanes? Would that also fit in the 48? No, I don't think the to have a, a one parking because um, a, a two-way left turn lane minimum is 12. Um, typically, I like to see that as a 13 or a 14 foot, um, but having a one parking lane, if you're talking about having bike lanes as well and travel uh, lanes. No, I'm not. I'm, so, I'm talking about so one parking a left turn lane and one lane of traffic each direction. That's one parking, like going in well, one Parking side. on one side or the other okay. of the street. If you took a bike lanes out, then you could potentially. Correct. Can I ask a question? Um, yeah. I think it was Ginger had spoken a little bit about the, um, the fact that on one side of Ninth, I don't know which side it was, but that's awfully, like the houses are much closer to the road. Oh, um, is that something that we could take into consideration for like that could be the parking side and then the sidewalk side could be on the other side or I don't know, something that makes sense from that standpoint? And, and I have no objection to doing that, but it seems secondary to actually assuming the, uh, the concept yeah. first, but absolutely something we can discuss assuming we, uh, we choose to move forward with a parking opportunity. And, and, and I guess we're, again, I don't know how close the houses yeah, are. That they, makes a big difference without yeah. knowing that. I, I would think if you're planning for 50 years, getting an 80-foot right-of-way makes sense because yes. things will be very different 45, 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, but if that puts somebody driving three feet out the front door, that's not such a good solution. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I can't, I don't know exactly what that, I mean, it's not that close. But obviously the, the houses on the south side of, um, ninth are there are more well there are more residents on that side of the street to start with so you know obviously they'd be more impacted than the north side I don't think there's quite as many driveways on the north side correct I mean ultimately you know. you. ultimately you're talking about driving in the front yard I understand that that's a concern I mean with an 80 foot right away you know the right away would be at least 16 or the road edge would be 16 feet from the right away line and then the houses still do have setbacks off of that so I don't have a number of what the houses are set back, but you know, you're to the right of way. You still have 16 feet before you actually hit street pavement. I'm thinking of people turning left. If there are more houses on that side and there are more left turns going driveways, that that might be a safety consideration too. So, a speed consideration. Ross, you uh, you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Well, I I would favor consider at least consider more space on the south side because of the right of way setback. Um, I think that uh, two lanes in each direction are fine, especially if you uh, well. The safety factor is always an issue. And when you have four lanes, you have higher speeds. Mm -hmm. and, and if you have one in each direction, I think that slows it down. If you have uh, bike lanes, again, it's a, like a place for the snow. These are all issues that we have to live with all year round. As the people that are on those streets. So in my, my estimation, uh, the uh, left turn middle lane doesn't cause more uh, a higher speed traffic flow. It, it reduces it. And so that's my point on uh, construction. Has anybody looked I certainly haven't, but has anybody looked like what the projections are out there for like the say the next 10 years, 25 years, 50 years, like 
I'm increasingly residential or, you know, in that, in that sense, like how far out is the city going to be expanding and what's that going to look like? I, I've lived here for nearly 25 years and I remember when I first came, um, Lord's Academy at that point was projected to be right in the center of the area, like the region of Oshkosh and it seemed far out, you know, from where, like where we sit. Um, but true to what they said, you know, in a lot of ways, that is the center now of that area. So I just wonder, like, what's that going to look like, if anyone knows or if there are studies on that to sort of guide? The comprehensive, the city's comprehensive land use plan would project um, what land uses are projected as the city continues to grow. Um, certainly, you know, south of 20th is, is industrial, but um, you know, you got um, between 9th and 20th, I believe, and I'm going from memory here, so it's, you know, let's take that for what it's worth. I, I believe that uh, is residential uh, plan. Um, and I know uh, East Central Wisconsin Regional Plan Commission does a lot of uh, traffic forecasting. Uh, as well, I know, um, I know we use them for that as well as most communities in their service area uh, use them for those type of services. Anyone else? We need to move forward with something today. I'll make a motion to move forward with uh, option one. Which is actually not numbered. It's oh, yeah. was included in the packet. Yeah. The other two, right? Are numbered, the other, the other two are numbered. So, so that's so that would be the option with the the twelve foot travel lanes, the two way left turn lane, and five foot bike lanes. Yeah. Correct. Motion sits on the table. Requires a second. Going once. I'll second it just so we have something to present because obviously the option two and three will still be presented to council. It'll just be noted that um, option one was the one we took a vote on to move it forward. Okay, so now we've uh, got a motion and a second on, as Mr. Collins described, option one, 12 feet in each direction, 14 foot shared left turn lane and bike lane on both sides. Either side. Anyone have a comment, question, or concern on it? Otherwise, I'm going to call the roll. Call the roll. Apple? No. Eliza? No. Kaczynski? Aye. Rosie? Aye. Von Schneider? Aye. Becker? Ties fail. No. Which leaves us with option two, option three, or my uh, undocumented option four of two twelves in each direction. <clears throat> Everyone have a preference on the remaining three? I'm gonna move then my, uh, my option four of 12 foot lanes, four of them, two in each direction with no bike lane and no shared left turn lane. Second. Comments, questions, discussion? I think it solves all of our problems, folks. And again, I'm not thoroughly convinced a bike lane will be utilized mm. in that area in particular. Anyone else? All the roll on, as I've called it, option four. Sable? Aye. Bison? Aye. Krasinski? No. Krause? No. Von Schneider? No. Becker? Aye. We're back to uh, <laughs> do a tie. <clears throat> Which leaves us with two and three. Would it be possible just to have all four presented to council and say that we couldn't get to a consensus at the advisory level? Or, yeah, I, mean, I think, I mean, well, I, then, I guess it's up to you. We can go through and vote for all of them. Right, the right, and I, 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 I appreciate what you're trying to accomplish, Mr. Krause. You know, all I was going to suggest is that we, uh, we then take a vote on of 
no recommendation and let Mr. Collins move forward with mm -hmm. what he wants. Well, I think um, all four. I, I guess is there anybody that prefer that wants to make a motion on option two or three? <laughs> If any of you, I mean, obviously, if any of you think that's the best option, you should get that on the floor and see what everybody thinks about it. If you're okay with the other two options, then you know, one you one thing to note on that with with the parking lanes, um, most certainly you're willing to, to to go that route. But you know, in some point in the future, when it does become you know an arterial and, and easier to the four lanes then the removal of the parking would come back to this board for discussion yep. and so forth so just keep that in mind as as we're going through this has there ever been parking in that section or? it's only a 20 foot road right now so as far as i know i don't think there ever is <laughs> <No. been. laughs> what's the posted speed limit right now 25 and if it would like go to four lanes it'd probably go to 30 or 35 Probably. And people would drive about probably 30. Five, five miles over at least. Uh, so you'd be going 35, 40 yeah. down that road yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> 10 over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally a four lane road to 30 would, in that area would probably be appropriate. Mm -hmm. And 35, 40 would be the travel speed comparable to like Jackson. Could be. <laughs> so to Mr. Collins' question, anyone uh, have a preference for two or three? Then I'm going to move that we, uh, we call the roll on a vote of no recommendation to well, council. Well, I think what'll what'll happen is I'll obviously we'll give them the minutes, and then I will basically give them the two options that neither one passed because of a split vote, so they'll get both of them anyway. Um, but could we get all four? Because I mean, this, this yeah, is good yeah, we could do that too. Yeah, okay. Then, then we can pick everyone apart and. If that's what you're trying to accomplish. And, and I have no issue if all four are presented. I just want to make it very clear that there was nothing that moved forward from this board okay. in terms of a recommendation. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to ask that we vote on no recommendation moving forward to the City Council on the proposal. Second. Comments, questions, concerns? Call the roll. Staple? Aye. Weissman? Aye. Chizinski? Aye. Rousey? Aye. Hunschneider? <clears throat> Aye. Becker? Aye. All right, which brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is table business. Yeah, so I well we had the proposed request for bike lanes on ninth, but I think we've well and that's why I skipped that. over it because yeah. we've beaten that horse within yep. an inch of its life. Sure. <laughs> so I think we're good there. Um, just a couple um, simple announcements. The Oshkosh Avenue Bridge opened this morning, so that is back functioning. Is the Sawyer Oshkosh Ave intersection open as well? Or? Yes, the, the, the intersection <coughs> is open, and um, I, I believe as you've uh, cor correctly identified online, there is. You know, no, no current plan in the capital improvement program for any work with that intersection. Yeah, a lot of people are complaining about why it wasn't done, but like I, you know, I said, you know, it's it's a difference between a state project and a city project, and there's no it, it's, in the. It, it's a difference between that, and it's also when the alternatives for Oshkosh Avenue were presented to the Common Council, um, there was no recommendation as far as a, a proposed alternative. It was a let's wait and see and make a recommendation at a later date on that intersection so that intersection is not in the five-year capital plan right now so it's but the, as jim said the bridge opened about six o'clock this morning yep. and everything's open to 41 yes yep so that is a discussion for some point in the future i know the city would like to get that intersection redone at some point but it's just it's a funding issue is what it is um and then secondly um, the Oregon Street and Snell Avenue, those reconstructions are in progress. So I don't know if you guys have any update on what what's state what's the state of those two or uh, we'll start with Snell. So Snell actually the project has started, but the Snell portion has not started. The contractor is currently working on South North Main Street. Um, just a uh, several hundred thousand or seven hundred or a thousand feet south of Snell, installing some storm sewer. Um, anticipate 
actually getting into the Snell intersection with Main Street and working on Snell in the next several three, four-ish weeks. Um, Oregon contractor is heavily focusing between 21st and the Glatz Creek Bridge, which is just south of Oregon, sorry, just south of 25th Avenue. Um, and they are about nine weeks into an 18 week construction window on that one. And then the only other item I had is I do have, we tabled it the last time, but I know while well, Mr. Uh, Peschel had asked for some information, I had presented kind of a crash report at the last meeting as far as um, bike crashes, any information on, on those. So I, will, I still got that on my to-do list and I'll get that for a future meeting. Any board members for future agenda items? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Looking for a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.